Hi, today I would like to give you an outlook into the future by talking about traveling wave protection relays and fault locators. I assume that not every one of you has these relays already in operation, but I believe there are some good reasons why these relays will become more common in the future. But first of all, let's talk about traveling waves. What is a traveling wave? I guess all of you have already uh, created traveling waves as children yourself when you had a rope and you gave it a whiplash and you could see how a wave was traveling along the rope to the end of the rope. So this is already a traveling wave. In the context of power systems, a traveling wave is caused by sudden step change in voltage. And while the, it is created by the step change in voltage, it is also creating a traveling wave on the current. So we have traveling waves are created, for example, by circuit breaker operations, but also by fault inceptions. And of course, fault inceptions is something we like to have a closer look at as protection people. We're very interested in this. So why are we looking at traveling waves and this technology? Well, they have some certain properties that make them attractive for protection cases or protection purpose of a line. So as, first of all, a traveling wave is a very fast moving phenomena. If we have a fault on the line, which is causing a voltage step change and thus causing a traveling wave, the traveling wave will travel along the line based on the inductance and capacitance per kilometer. Um, and usually for an overhead line, this is almost equal to the speed of light. So around 0.98 times the speed of light. On a cable, we're talking about roughly 0.6 times the speed of light. With that, the traveling wave is actually the very first phenomena relays can detect before the current, the fault current, is starting to increase. And if the relays are capable of detecting these fast-moving phenomena, they can make tripping decisions before the current is increasing, so they can trip very fast. We're talking about trip times of around 4 milliseconds. This is extremely fast. The question might be, is it important that a relay can trip so fast? I guess for maybe not today, but in the future, with less inertia on the system, we can assume that we have to trip faster and faster to keep the system stable. You might wonder why you have never saw a traveling wave in your fault recordings from your relay. Well, this brings us to our next or the second property of traveling waves, which is that traveling waves have a very steep edge, so a very fast rise time to their peak value. And for, to be able to measure these very steep edges of a traveling wave, your protection relay or your fault locator has to sample the signal with a very short interval. So you have to have a very high sampling frequency to be able to see this traveling wave pulse. In your ordinary phaser-based relay, usually the fault recordings have a resolution of 1.5 kilohertz and therefore it just swallows the traveling wave and you cannot see it on your normal fault recording. At the same time now, this property of this very steep edge is the characteristic that is used by traveling wave relays to detect a traveling wave. Because only traveling waves have, have these very steep edges they are detecting for. This has some challenges also for protection testing, but we'll later talk about these challenges at the end. Let's have a look at one of the first traveling wave principles so we can see apart from the speed why they tend to be also very accurate in fault location. And first of all this is a single-ended method for detecting uh, faults on the line. So as I said we have a fault on the line and what we see here is a single line diagram and when you from top to bottom we see a time scale. So what it shows you is at the point of fault inception, the traveling wave will travel with an endless time to the terminal of the line. And from there, and I forgot to mention this, traveling waves have also the characteristic that they can be reflected. So from this point, 
in the station, because there is a different characteristic impedance within the station, the traveling wave gets reflected back to the fault location. At the fault location, we again have a short circuit. So this is again a change in the characteristic impedance for the traveling wave. So it gets reflected back from the fault again to the terminal of the line. And by measuring the first arrival of the traveling wave and the first reflection and uh, dividing this by two, I can already calculate uh, the fault location. The last little bit that is missing here is the propagation speed. But this can be measured very accurately by basically the same principle. During commissioning, one terminal, the line end is open, the circuit breaker is open. We're closing in the circuit breaker, which is also causing a traveling wave. It will travel along the line back from that open terminal, it gets reflected back to the uh, terminal of the relay. And there, we can, with this principle, we can also measure the complete propagation speed of the line. And there's the big advantage here in the accuracy, because we're only depending on the propagation speed and accurate time measurement, and both can be done very accurately. Compared to impedance protection, impedance-based fault location, this is depending on the measurement of currents and voltages, and also of accurate knowledge about the zero sequence impedance of a line, which is usually often guessed. Uh, also, uh, especially on the current measurement, we have a very high dynamic range, which is also the reason why a protection CT core is not a measurement core. So with that being said, this will always have some inaccuracy. Here we can achieve fault location accuracy within single meters. But of course, the single-ended fault locator also has its downsides. What you cannot see here is, apart from the reflection, the traveling wave also splits and moves on towards other line terminals. It might get reflected from there back to the location of our relay. And suddenly this relay has to determine if it's measuring the reflection from the fold or a reflection coming from the back from another terminal of the, li of the predecessor line. And this is, can be a tricky task. So there's also a different method that is independent of reflections and therefore a little bit more reliable, which is the two-ended method. Here again we see the same diagram, the so-called Bewley diagram. So we see the single line diagram and the time axis is going down. We have the fault at a location of roughly 30%. The traveling wave sets off in both directions of the line terminals. It will reach terminal one first, or the left side terminal first, then the right hand side terminal. And by measuring the time difference between the two arrivals, you can also determine the fault location. And again, looking at the formula, it's again only depending on speed and line length. Last but not least, a purely protection principle for traveling waves is a directional element. You can also develop directional elements based on traveling waves. Usually what they do is they compare the polarity of the current traveling wave and the voltage traveling wave. Both traveling waves emerge with the same polarity and then travel with the same speed along the line. The only difference is on the primary system, when the fault is inside of the line, the fault travels through the CT from the line side and it will change the polarity of the current traveling wave on the secondary side. So the relay only has to detect if the voltage and the current are of opposite polarity. They can detect that the traveling wave was created from the, from the front or from the line side. If the traveling wave is caused by a fault or a breaker operation in the, on the predecessor line, the traveling waves would travel again with the same polarity on the primary system. Now there's the current traveling wave now entering the CT from the bus bar side, so uh, from the back, and it will maintain the same polarity. With the same polarity, the relay will detect a fault in reverse direction. So that's all about traveling waves. There's one last question, which is how can you actually test or commission such protection relays. And they actually have some challenges that come with these type of relays, especially for the protection test sets. I mentioned that a traveling wave has a very 
a steep edge, a very fast rise time. So for the protection test set, this would also mean, same as for the relays, we would have to be able to sample the output signals with a very high frequency. At the same time, you want to use the same test set to test all your conventional relays with currents of 30, 60 amps per channel. And now if you try to drive high currents and at the same time have very fast current changes, this will just result in more power. The amplifier would need more power and the test set would become much bigger and unpractical in the daily use. So what is more common for commissioning such relays is to have an accessory which is responsible for creating these very steep traveling wave pulses. The accessory would run in a phase lock loop or um, with a very precise timing together with a conventional test set and would generate the traveling wave pulses for current and voltage point on wave on top of the conventional test signals coming from the test set. This has to be super accurate. We are talking about nanoseconds accuracy and to control this setup, as you saw, this principle is mainly based on power system data. Um, you would actually use a software that can model your power system, you enter your line data, you place the fault and the software takes care from that point on. So with a fully integrated solution, it's actually quite straightforward to test these relays again. So I hope this was interesting, a good outlook into the future and I hope you can make use of it. Yeah, I'm already curious to see how these relays are going to develop in the future. Anyway, um, I hope you're a little bit more prepared for whatever uh, is coming your way. So thank you.